wanted to talk about was uh, this book here, To Catch Catch and Kill by Ronan Farrow. I've just finished reading this. I bought it last month. It was part of my December reading list. I'm sure some of you are aware that I sometimes read, you know, a few books a month, and this is one of them. I've just about finished it. And, um, yeah, it's a tough read, man. It's a bloody tough read. Ronan Farrow famously is the son of Woody Allen, right? And he was... He's already been at the center of some sort of, you know, sexual misconduct allegations because his sister, Dylan, accused his father, Woody Allen, of uh, molesting her, I think, when she was younger. No one ever believed her. The case got thrown out through lack of evidence or because of, I think the girl at the time or the, his sister was really young. Where something happened where eventually Woody Allen got um, found not guilty. But then to make the story even weirder, Woody Allen then goes and marries his stepdaughter, right? I think a, a Chinese or an Asian woman who they adopted in their family when she was young. And then that lady grew up and suddenly Woody Allen married her. And so far, no one seems to care. I think Scarlett Hansen is one of Woody Allen's biggest defenders. Said she, you know, doesn't care about she. Woody Allen's a friend. She's going to stick by him. Blah, 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 blah. So Ronan Farris had a bit of a dicey relationship with this sort of stuff anyway. So for him to write this book, Catch and Kill, which essentially kicked off this entire investigation of this book that was published in New Yorker, kicked off the whole um, Me Too movement. It kicked off um, these sexual allegations being put towards these um, uh, men who were in high or positions of power within network television, entertainment industry, all that mess, right? So first off, I'd say there's some misconceptions coming into this as a guy, right? The misconception was that I remember reading or finding out through the grapevine that supposedly Harvey Weinstein, who's like the main protagonist of this book, the guy that's, you know, is getting the most um, amount of uh, flack for the actions that he's partaking in, obviously rightly so. But I remember when I first heard the story, the, the kind of prevalent thing I remember seeing online was the fact that Harvey Weinstein was this big power broker, right, um, who essentially was... Um, one of the main people who was he was kind of like the decision maker he was the one that could kind of ordain your career successful or not successful so he had this like you know outstretched influence on the industry and the, the thing that I heard on the internet was that he would do he would proposition women especially attractive women or girls that he was into it doesn't matter what they're attractive or not um, and he would essentially ask them for sexual favors in exchange for um, career advancement and supposedly you know it's an unwritten rule that sometimes within the entertainment industry two consenting adults can partake in this kind of gray transition right transaction sorry where the woman because you know we all have our i guess as men and women we have these intrinsic qualities that separate us in some way some respects if you would say yeah let's say a man for instance like jordan peterson i think mean, mentions it a few times right let's say men have the strength right power or you know, there's always a threat of violence between two guys. So I think if you're arguing with a dude or you're talking nonsense, there's always that line you don't want to cross because it, especially if you don't want to fight the person, it could always kind of escape to that, to that kind of, you know, realm. But if you're a woman, that necessarily isn't really something that's going to be on the table. So women tend to kind of damage each other by damaging each other's reputation, right? Spreading gossip, telling stories, maybe telling some white lies here and there, whatever it may be. So if that's the case, then it's not out of re it's not out of reason. It doesn't it's not so preposterous to suggest or to imagine a world where some men will use their power and influence to somehow cajole women to give them the sexual favors that they desire. And if the women are game, they will use their sexual prowess in order to lure these powerful men. Right? There will be some sort of weird kind of transaction. And again, it's a bit grey, it's a bit murky, it's a bit yucky. You don't really want to get involved in that sort of stuff, but I can see it happening. So that was a story that you heard, right? What happens is this guy, if you if you if you give him whatever he wants sexually, then he will follow through his promises and you will then become the next Rene Zellweger, whatever it may be, right? That was a prevalent the prevalent story that I heard. Then the more you dug into it, the more you heard um stories or accounts from various women who accused him of sexual misconduct, and then you started hearing the stories of rape. Then it started to get a bit dark. Then you were like, whoa, 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 whoa. This is some mad stuff. And then when you look into it deeper, the thing that really upset me reading this book isn't the fact that Harvey Weinstein is a monster and a really bad guy and somebody who should be, you know, thrown under the prison, right? Don't get me wrong. The thing that really hurts me reading this Catch and Kill book by Ronan Farrell 
is the amount of people who are complicit to his nastiness. The people in the industry who kind of turned, who kind of turned a blind eye and allowed these young, vulnerable women who had no experience, no um, idea on how to navigate the industry, be taken advantage of by an absolute ogre, right? You look at Harvey Weinstein's pictures online and you think to yourself, yeah, no wonder he did that sort of stuff, right? Because how is he meant to attract women? If he's got, if that's that's the kind of personality that he has, right? If he's like, if he looks like that, how is he meant to track women apart from, you know, um, essentially proposition them to come upstairs to his room, and all of a sudden turning up when you open a door, he's like, you know, in a in a kind of nightgown or whatever maybe. It's just strange. Normal people, right? Even if your friend sleeps around your house, you you feel a bit awkward walking around in your boxes. Imagine telling a woman that you don't even know, right? Someone that's obviously looking at you as some kind of mentor or somebody that can maybe guide them in their career there is a weird like you know there is something quite gratifying about having somebody in the industry especially if you're um, it's happened to me a few times where you're a bit of an older guy and a younger person male or female is sort of looking at you for guidance so you and you feel it you're like oh okay this person is hanging on my every word to so take that and sort of take advantage of that kind of energy or that kind of dynamic and then suddenly to turn it into like some weird sexual power play is really abhorrent and again, just goes to show how much of a monster this guy is because, again, he got away with it primarily because everyone turned a blind eye. And that's the thing that I think is the most telling thing about this book. Um, we know monsters exist, right? Serial killers exist. We know that. We know this things. That's a thing. So imagine being in a town or being in a village or in a city where there's a serial killer running rampant. But because the serial killer happens to be the CEO of a big, powerful brand that employs a lot of people, everyone kind of stays quiet. That's the kind of level of um cowardice that exists in his book and again ronan farrow is a really good guy i think throughout the entire book you get the sense that he was a little bit naive the way he kind of approached the issue with nbc because they didn't want to run his story he keeps talking about how he was really um worried about his losing his job in the whole um in the whole melee of this thing he was really careful about not wanting to embarrass his bosses and knowing open no oppenheim who i'm shocked how no oppenheim still has a job that is insane i don't know how that guy is still employed I don't know why NBC decided to still have him as being the kind of main honcho there. But yeah, he doesn't come out of this book um, looking good either. But, you know, Ronan Farrell wins this with good intentions and then came out of it with a kind of frightening tale of just how difficult it must be for a young woman to kind of exist in Hollywood or in the entertainment industry. And I've wondered that myself anyway for a long time. I thought maybe nowadays, I think because you see the reaction that someone like a Meghan Markle gets or a Kim Kardashian, maybe people don't want, wouldn't care. But I'd love it if we got a documentary or we got some sort of insight or a news report or 60 minutes kind of piece on women, especially women, young women who are really attractive and trying to navigate in the entertainment industry, especially the women who aren't necessarily, um, you know, your A-list actress, actresses or actors, right? For the most part, I'd imagine it would be a really telling um, kind of piece of content, people to see just how grim and just how dark it can get when you're some, when you have, when you just happen to be blessed with a certain look, you happen to have like symmetry or you happen to have a, per a particular nose or your body is something that um, men who are into women will be sexually attracted to, whatever it may be. It must be really strange. Like, let alone if you're talented. So, so okay, if you're not talented, maybe it's a little bit of a, you know, it's easy to kind of get an idea of where you sit on a totem pole. But when you're super talented and you're really hot, imagine how weird it must be walking into these rooms with old men in their 60s no real experience dating women outside of the fact that they were able to hook up with a model because they happen to be this guy worth billions, right? Most of the time, you look at Harvey Weinstein, even the, the lady that he was married to who divorced him. Um, there was no way he would have got a lady like that if he wasn't Harvey Weinstein, you know, the big uh, TV or entertainment exec guy, right? That wasn't going to happen. So there's already a lack of experience when it comes to interacting with women of a certain caliber. So imagine you're then in an environment where these guys are sitting in front of them and suddenly these women are looking at them all doughy-eyed and wanting to have a career and stuff. It's just, honestly, it's just a really hard book to read. I, re I recommend it for everyone to read. I think all guys should read this book, Catch and Kill. I think anyone, especially if you're in a scene, especially if you're in any kind of position of power or influence or authority or whatever it may be, right? I think it should really be this book because, again, it makes you, it kind of, even though it's an account from Rowan Farrow, who's a guy, it still tells the story of these women and tells you just how horrifying it must be. There's a there's an account here of this lady, I think that was a TV exec. She wasn't even like... The thing that's really abhorrent in this book too, because that, that was a narrative you heard. Oh, these young actresses, you know, they get into Hollywood, they know what they're getting into. They, if they want to they wanna be the next, you know, Reese Witherspoon, they have to do whatever it takes to get there, right? That's what you hear. Cool, all right? That's BS. 
because there's a really random TV exec who's like a nobody, like a showrunner type girl, who ends up getting physic- sexually assaulted. I think she ends up getting raped in the end of it, right? By Harvey Weinstein. And the account is really distressing because there's lots of occasions where a more street smart girl would say, hey, don't go there, don't answer the phone. But she was so naive. She was so happy to have the dream, her dream job, right? Working finally in the entertainment industry because anyone that, anyone, most people would know that those kind of jobs are really highly coveted, right? So, and they're oversubscribed or they're oversubscribed and they're highly coveted. So when you finally do get your foot into the door, you're just happy to be there. If it's getting people's coffees, photocopying, running to the, to do the prep run, you don't care. As long as you're in, you're in. So Harvey took advantage of that sort of energy. And this girl in this account, she's one of the kind of last stories towards the end. She essentially, you know, she says it even in her account. Like there were so many red flags that she should have been more aware of, but she's not street smart. And in general, why should you have your backup? Why should you be on such alarm when you're working in, when you're in a workplace? It should be a professional environment. It should be, for lack of a better term, a, a pretty safe space, right? You should be able to, um, you know, hang out with your colleagues without thinking that, if you stay in the toilet too long, someone might come in and pounce on you. I don't know. That should be that should be something that should be fairly cool. But it doesn't happen that way. And eventually, I'll be going to take advantage of the situation and essentially destroys her life forever. And that's the thing that's most heartbreaking. He's left a trail of so many broken people. And and from, and even now, he's still denying it. He's obviously, uh, you know, maybe in his interest, he has to deny it because he doesn't want to get served a big sentence. But He's dragging out the case. He's probably not going to see any jail time, really, especially with the status he has and the money and influence and stuff. And it's just really disgusting, really. The only thing I hope of this story is that somehow um, Harvey ends up settling with them, with the women who accused him, and he ends up being completely depleted of all his funds. That would be cool because, again, someone like this, I don't think prison will teach him anything. You know, the same way how Bill Cosby is still denying uh, and still kind of maintaining his innocence, even though he's in prison right, charged with flipping, drugging women and sexually assaulting them when they're asleep. I think the same with Harvey. I think if you end up going in prison, it wouldn't change him. He'd still maintain his innocence. And he's still kind of, because I think you said it recently, like he was, he's actually one of the, he said something like he was, he's one of the, the trailblazers in women within the entertainment industry, which is just insane if you read the book. But again, I recommend you read the book, Run and Fire, Catch and Kill. It's really harrowing. It's hard to read. There are plenty of times I was on a train reading this book and I just had to stop and kind of just stare out to the window thinking to myself, bloody hell, man. If you're, if you're a guy and you have a daughter who wants to be an actress or an actor or be a, scri- a script writer or a showrunner, you're gonna, well, if, if you read this, you're, you're, you're going to want to put anything else in their hand apart from a pen and a keyboard. You're going to be like, nah, forget that. Like, go play sports. I don't know. Dig a well. Open up a beauty salon. Open up a supermarket. Whatever it may be. Just get away from the entertainment industry because there's so many douchebags and again the thing that hurts the most is the cowardice the absolute cowardice of everyone that was involved especially women that's the thing that's really disheartening some of the i think they call them honey traps right some of the women that work for hard but again it's just it's so difficult it reminds me of the anna delvey story there's so many this is it's hard because i think if you're a woman you're conflicted position because again those jobs are so highly coveted right to be Harvey Weinstein's PA or to be within his inner circle at that time prior to the invest prior to the allegations being known in public because I think they were known in the industry you would have been so happy just to have the job you don't want to risk your not having that job anymore by telling on him or by informing the girls that they shouldn't go to his hotel room so essentially they all kind of you know there was these honey traps who were essentially older women or girls that Harvey Weinstein had sexually assaulted in the past who now were in his inner circle or who kind of forgave him for it and kind of moved on who were being used to kind of lure other naive girls or girls who had their backs up a bit. Girls who were a bit like, mm, this is a bit weird. Why am I going to this old man's room? So then he'd use a girl that he previously might have molested before or a girl that he was in, you know, friends with, quote unquote, and they would lure those new girls um, up to his room. And that room trick, it's just like everyone's got the same story. You know, he'd, he'd speak to you in person sometimes and ask to see your script or give you compliments and then invite you back to his hotel room and suddenly you walk open the door and he's in his robe. And like I said, mate, how many times have you been with your friends? Your friend slept over or you've been at your friend's house or you've gone on holiday together and you feel embarrassed walking around with underwear with your friends. These are your friends, people you love, people that are essentially your family. Imagine Harvey Weinstein that fat ogre of a guy walking around in his robe naked like in front of girls that he doesn't know or he's just met a day ago like the absolute brass neck on him the absolute um 
again, the entitlement to think that somehow he's not going to get in trouble for this. It's just like insane. And again, the, he's pleading on his innocence. It's just like, it's just insane. I don't understand it. But yeah, I recommend you check it out, man. It's a really good book. Um, I finished it. it. Took a bit longer than a month to finish because again, it's hard to read. Um, Ronan Farrow's got, you know, he's just the way he writes is really good, but it's so detailed as well. So there's some harrowing accounts of sexual assault. So if you're feeling a bit queasy, then probably don't. But if you really, especially again, for any young men out there who are trying to get involved in the entertainment industry, especially as a power broker, especially as somebody of influence, a decision maker, a gatekeeper of some sort, you really need to check this book out. I think it's a real good um, lesson of how to navigate uh, the workplace, especially when it comes to females and how to kind of just be aware of the things that girls think about that guys don't ever think about, right? This intrinsic kind of fear that maybe if you're alone with a dude you don't know that he's going to get the wrong, the wrong impression, I don't know, man. It, it just made me... I just felt a lot of sympathy. I felt a lot of compassion for the girls, women involved. And this, is, again, was prior to me reading their accounts on the internet. Like, oh, these girls, young actresses, they get into the entertainment industry. They know what they're getting into. Uh, it's a give and take thing. No, 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 no. It's not a give and take. This guy's a fucking monster and he deserves to be buried under the prison. But, you know, we'll see how it goes with the courts and stuff. But yeah, check it out. The Catch and Kill by Ronan Farrow. An amazing expose on uh, lies, spies, and conspiracy to protect predators. Um, yeah, really good book, man. Recommend you check 